All right, guys, welcome back to the OR. So now we're going to be doing, uh, we'll be doing this uh, moment makeover. This young lady, after three pregnancies, uh, has saggy, deflated breasts, stretched out belly. You can see how it's bulging out. So first thing we're going to do, breast augmentation, 485 high-profile silicone breast implants under the muscle, under the breast fold. Then we're going to lift her breast tissue, do an anchor type breast lift. Then we'll do a little bit of liposuction, love handles, harvest some more fat from the belly area, subcutaneous fat, external fat. So I can do a little bit of a fat transfer to hip dips. You can see hip dips, I'm gonna to try to fill them in. Scoop out the left handles and I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the skin and tighten the muscles to give her a nicer, flatter belly. So a complete mommy makeover. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a little opening, create a path to the submuscular space and we'll do the breast augmentation first. Place the implant under the muscle and once the implant's in, we're gonna reshape the breast tissue and perform the breast lift. So by placing the implant in first and then designing the breast lift on top of that, you kind of think of it as a customized breast lift. Everybody's a little bit different. Uh, we place the implant in, allow the natural breast tissue to redrape all the breast implant and then finalize the design for the breast lift itself to get the best possible lift. Come on out. This is the implant, 485cc high profile silicone breast implant. Take a closer look, you can see sort of waviness on it. That's called rippling. All implants ripple. Silicone ripples less than saline. That's one of the reasons why people choose silicone over saline, but it still ripples. So silicone is a little bit softer, has a little bit less rippling. Those are the two benefits over saline. And when we do silicone breast implants, I use this device, the InstaBoob. It allows me to take a big implant and squeeze into a small opening. This is not something I would need to use for a saline implant because saline implants are empty when they go in. They don't need a big incision. I don't need to squeeze them in. I just make a tiny, tiny scar. So the tiny scar breast augmentations are salines for silicones, also known as gel, cohesive, gummy bear. Those are different words for the same thing. For those, I use this device called InstaBoob. It allows me to take a big implant and squeeze through a small opening, just like that. Okay, so big 45 cc implant, relatively small incision. This is a breast lift, so she's gonna have the anchor scar, so it's not really an issue, but still as a way of getting the implants into a small opening. This allows us to do that. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So implant sign, you can see nice volume, nice upper pole fullness. Her natural breast tissue is falling down. Ideally, it'd be sitting like this, nice roundness. So we're gonna tuck it in and then take her nipple, which is down here and move it up there. So it's looking forward instead of going downward. So I'm gonna be doing the markings for the breast lift. Now her areola is under my fingers. Again, look at the pigmentation. Now what I wanna do is I wanna pull the areola out of the way and create a straight line. And this is all the skin will be removing. But notice that although areola is outside of my cutting area, I'm gonna leave behind all of this. This is gonna be along the vertical part of the scar. This is gonna get darker. That's why I refer to it as residual pigmentation. So come take a closer look, come really, really close. Look at all the pigment in the skin. This stays behind. I can't cut all the skin out, otherwise there'll be no skin left behind. So I gotta leave this behind and this gets activated after surgery inflammation going on and this becomes as dark as this. So we've done the cutting on the right side, reshape the breast. You see the nipple down here has moved up there. So it's going to be the opening it's anchor type incision. We're just using piercing towel clips to hold the skin together. Reshaped the nice round look. Nipples going to be looking forward instead of falling down like this. So now we're going to go ahead, do the same thing here, check for symmetry and start closing up. So we've reapproximated the skin edges. Just to give you an idea of the shape, so you can see nice round shape compared to the very downward falling look she had before, nice upper pole fullness. She's gonna have an anchor type breast lift. So this is the price you pay to get this lift. People often ask, can I get a breast lift and not have the scars? Unfortunately, there's no magical lift. If you wanna get a lift, you need scars. The bigger the lift, the bigger the scars. So we're done with the breast augmentation breast lift. Next up, we'll be doing a tummy tuck. 
uh, lipo. You can see these bulges here. I've infiltrated some tumor sense for solutions. So we're gonna go ahead and liposuction this, uh, harvest the fat, and then inject into her hip dips. You can see when she lies down, the hip dips look really, really good. But when she's standing, you can see there's a little bit of indent. So we'll probably aim for about 150, 180 cc's per side just to fill in the hip dips a little bit. So we're done with the liposuction. This little bulge, it's just some loose skin. See, if some people have a bulge here that's not fat. It's just skin laxity, so we're gonna fix it when we do the tummy tuck and pull things down. We're gonna go up to here and pull this all the way down to the pubic area and then tighten her muscles. When you look at her, you can see how kind of flat she is compared to what she looked like when she was standing up. Her belly was bulging out. So when she lies down, everything falls in. We're gonna go ahead and tighten the abdominal wall and give her approximately this much flatness. So we're gonna start by making incision in the lower abdomen all the way across. This is a long scar. Uh, sometimes people wonder, can we make a shorter scar? Cheat. Well, if you, if you make it shorter and your folds are long, that means you're leaving behind folds and you look unfinished. So sometimes doing less doesn't give you less of a result, it gives you an unfinished result, and that's not a good thing. That actually looks worse than not doing anything. So we finished doing a muscle repair. Uh, come to the side, I want you to see, this is her skin. You can see she's very thin. She doesn't have a lot of external fat. The depth of her, the volume is intra-abdominal. I made her nice and tight. This is her body cavity. I can't make her any flatter than this. Her external fat is very, very minimal. We've tightened the muscles to give her a flatter blade so it's not bulging out so much. Excuse me, better than this but she's not gonna be a skinny flat belly because there's lots of internal volume. Inside the abdominal cavity is where you have your organs, your liver, your stomach, your intestine. There's also internal fat, which we cannot cut out, which we cannot liposuction. So we finished with the tummy tuck and now a little bit of fat transferred to the hip dips. So manual injection. Okay, so I put 180 cc's on this side, I'll do the same thing on this side. So we'll make, I'm gonna be injecting into this area. I'll make a little incision right there. And then use my injection cannula. Some tunnel leak, make some space, and then we start injecting. And we are done breast augmentation, breast lift, anchor type breast lift, reshaping under the muscle implants, tummy tuck, muscle plication, fixing her internal abdominal wall to give her nicer, flatter belly, low liposuction, and fat transfer to the hip dips to give her nice curves.